Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcad. So today I wanted to talk about some uh, some of the Bob Art software and some of the things you can do. So let's go ahead and dive right in. <laughs> uh, the first thing I want to do is um, I want to load an image file. So let me go to Bob Art here. And let me see what I got to work with. Okay, so I'm going to go with this one here. So this is uh, this is uh, a logo, and uh, so I want to talk about uh, converting images into lines or arcs. Okay, so one of the things that you can do is you can run a, a spline around this, and uh, you can trace this image yourself. And this is one of the ways that you can convert an image into lines or arcs that you can work with. Okay, so you can see I was tracing around it. Now I'll use I on my keyboard. I is going to toggle uh, the image on and off. And then under my utilities I have deform and uh, deform is going to let me pull the shape in or out so I can get it closer to what I'm looking for. Okay, now that's one of the ways that you can take an image and uh, convert it into lines or arcs is by tracing over it. Now, another option you can do is you can use the auto vectorization where we can just come in here and we can uh, vectorize that uh, image. And by vectorizing it, we're going to convert that image uh, into lines or arcs automatically. Okay, it's very quick um, and an easy way to convert uh, images into lines or arcs. Okay. So now that we have uh, some lines or arcs, the next thing that I want to look at is creating an emboss model. So, you know, Bob Art does a number of things. Um, one of the things it does is let you work with images where you're either going to trace over them or you're going to vectorize them or convert them automatically into lines or arcs. That's one of the things that it does. Um, one of the other things it will do is create an emboss model. So using 2D profiles, you can emboss in 3D to create... Um, you know, signs and logos and uh, different things like that. So from here, what I've done is I've created a uh, stock model. Now you can change the, the size of your stock model um, so that your geometry fits within it. But that's, that's what I started with was the stock model. Now, when we right click in here, we get a number of different embossment types, you know, regular sweep, two rail sweep image. There's all these different types. The first one I want to, I'm really only going to cover a few in this video, but I want to talk about regular embossment. This is probably the most popular one that you would use. Um, we're going to change the color of it. Now what you have is a cross section. So this is uh, what a cross section of the part would look like. And um, you have line, arc, spline, uh, ellipse. You have all these different options. Now, here recently, we also added a custom profile too. So you can actually emboss with your own custom profile versus just uh, the options that we have in here. So that's definitely a new feature within the last uh, uh, version or two. But in this case, we're going to do uh, convex ellipse. I'm just going to add a little bubble here and then my application type is going to be an add and I'll choose OK. All right. From here, I'm going to go ahead and select some of the letters here, which will be these letters here. Spacebar to lock it in and then I'm going to regenerate. Now, when I regenerate, um, when I regenerate, you can see that we have our embossed model um, starting to come to life. If I hide my font, you can, or if I hide my text, you can see uh, what's going on here. Now, one of the, one of the things that we can do is we can come back and we can edit um, our cross section, so we can pull that up or down or make it bigger or smaller. But another very powerful tool is this base height here. With the base height, we can move the letter up or where it starts from, we can move it up. So in this case, let's make it 125 and then we'll go ahead and re-emboss. And now what's going to happen is the letter is going to be 125 high before we get the embossment of that um, convex ellipse on the top. So this is how you're able to move uh, geometry around, okay? Uh, as far as your embossments, your levels, like where it starts embossing from. And uh, you can use that to dial in your design. Now, the next thing I wanna do here is I'm just gonna sketch a rectangle. 
like this. Okay, so now I have a rectangle, and then I'm going to do another regular emboss, okay? So we're going to do emboss regular. This time we're going to do it a line. Um, all right, we're going to leave basically everything the same. I'm just going to make this a different color, and we're going to choose OK. We'll go ahead and select this boundary here, and then we'll regenerate. Now what you're going to see is that this rectangle, we get this angled line because we did an angled line embossment but you can see how it's where it comes into the green letters you can see how it it goes up high it embosses high on that okay and um the reason why this is happening is we're doing an emboss ad the application type is an ad if we edit this you can see application is an ad so what an ad does is it will add to whatever embossments are there based on the cross-section values, okay? In this case, what we want to do is we want to create that line and, uh, you know, this angled surface in the background, but we don't want it to edit the letters. So we're going to use a merge high applic application type. And what this will do is this will emboss along there, but now it only cuts through the model where it's at a high point. So instead of going adding to the letters that are already there, it embosses where it's located and wherever it, uh, wherever it intersects above the top of the model, uh, the previous embossment, that's where that comes up, okay? So we get some letters here. This looks pretty good. What I wanna do is I wanna add some of these other letters here. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to select these other letters. Now generally if I have a bunch of uh, letters that I'm working with what I would end up doing is putting these on their own layer um, or using a separate color so I could select it very quickly but we're going to go ahead and add that and regenerate and then now we have what we're looking at here. So we did two regular embossments. We covered adding. We also covered merge high. The next thing that I want to talk about is um, two rail sweep. This is by far one of the more popular embossment types. So I'm going to hit E on my keyboard to uh, hide my emboss model. Okay. And then from here, I'm just going to create uh, a spline. So I'm just going to kind of do a little shape like this. And then I'm going to do another little shape like that. Okay. So that gives me my two rails. And then from here, I'm going to do my cross section. So my cross section is going to look something, something like this. Okay. Let me deform it a little bit. So I'll pull this, or not unwrap. Okay. Deform. I'll just pull that down a little bit. That looks good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is a, 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 a two rail sweep. So we'll go in boss two rail sweep. Okay, uh, from here we'll just make it a different color again and choose OK. Now we have our first rail, we're going to select it. We have our second rail, we're going to select it. Now what's really important is that both of these are facing the same way. See how there's this arrow? We want them both facing the same direction. Otherwise the uh, the surface or the embossment that's created will be all twisted. Okay. And then the next thing we want to do is create this uh, cross section here uh, or select the cross section here. And then we're going to go ahead and regenerate. And then I'll unblank my emboss model. And now you can see that we have an emboss model generated. All right, so we're going to do the same thing that we did before, where what we're going to do is we're going to add the base height. So we're going to push it up a little bit higher. So we're going to edit this. We're going to go to our base height. We're going to add a value here. And then we'll go ahead and regenerate. And now you can see that's come up a little bit higher. Okay, so again, we did the regular emboss, uh, we did an add, we did a merge high. We also did uh, the two rail sweep and you have the applica application type to add or a merge high uh, or a cutaway as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and just go a little bit further here. What I'm gonna do is draw a rectangle and it's gonna be like this, all right. So from here, I'm going to, okay, so we have this here. Um, what I'm going to do from here is 
create one of those like that. And let me move that out of the way. This is just going to be, let me break this into some pieces. Uh, let me, I'm sorry, let me divide it. Break many divide. Let's go four pieces. All right, let me get rid of these two here. All right. So we're going to do a two rail sweep again. So we're going to do two rail sweep. There's going to be an add. We're going to do one here. And then we're going to do one here. And then from there, we'll select our cross section. All right, let's go ahead and make sure that these are pointing the same direction. So you can see this time they're not. So what I'm going to do is reverse one of them. So I get the arrow both going the same direction and then we'll go ahead and regenerate. So you can see on in this case here, we were able to put this along a cylinder. So uh, from here, so that's one way that you can use the, the two rail sweep. The other way that we're going to do this is a little bit different. Okay, so let me hide the embossment. This time I'm just going to bend... Uh, I'm going to deform one of these lines here because it's already there and I'm going to swap out what I've selected. So let me remove, 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 and then I'm going to select from there and then I'll select from here. Again, I want to make sure that my arrows are facing the same direction. So I'll reverse this one. Okay. And then my cross section will be this one here and let's go ahead and regenerate. And then now you can see how this is curved and it's put along um, this section here. So again, the two rail sweep is very powerful and uh, gives you a lot of flexibility uh, when creating your designs. Uh, a couple of last topics that I wanted to leave off on. Uh, number one, when you're creating your stock, there's a resolution. You can use a lower resolution to allow for quick generation. See, it generates it very quick, but it's at a lower resolution. Usually when you're trying to create your design, you can set it to a lower resolution. And this way, when you're making updates and changes, it's very easy to do so. And then before you go to machine the part, you can come back and you can increase this number. And when you increase that number, uh, it's going to take a little longer to calculate but at the same time, it's going to generate a more refined image. It will be much smoother and, um, you know, a better, better quality. Okay, so that's your resolution of your stock model. Uh, the other thing that we talked about that is extremely important or very useful is your base height. This is how you push your you know, where the embossment starts from up. So this way you can, um, you know, play with the levels of your design. Uh, the other thing that we talked about is your application type. We talked about add and we also talked about merge high. Okay. So add adds to the existing embossment, merge high embosses, but will only show up where it's at its high point. Okay. All right. The last thing that we talked about really was the two rail sweep. Uh, you have your two different rails. It's really important that those rails are facing the correct uh, direction or the same direction. So when you highlight it, you'll see the arrow. You want to make sure that arrow is facing the same direction on the other side. Uh, that's very important uh, in order to get the result that you're after. Uh, and then, you know, you select your cross section. And depending on whether you selected horizontals or verticals, uh, you know, will determine which way it uh, it generates that, uh, that embossment, you know, whether it's a cylinder or where, whether it's more along a, a curve surface like we've done here okay so these are just some of the highlights of the bobcad 28 with the bob art software um, one of the other and one of the last things i'll go into as well is you know you can save your uh embossments you can remove your non-embossed area okay this will this will give you just your embossments and you can save your embossments as components and when you save it as a component you can actually use it in future designs so you can create different uh, characteristics of your you know palm trees or what have you or even uh, import uh, 
uh, STL files that you purchase from other vendors and be able to use them as part of your design. So hopefully uh, we can pick that up in the next video. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or feedback, reply back to the Facebook, to YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. If you like the video, let's get a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any comments, you can comment below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much, guys.